I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Uh, some of you may know me, some of you don't. Real quickly, my background is I'm board certified in chiropractic, I'm board certified in orthopedics, I'm board certified in pain management, I'm double board certified in nutrition, it's five board certifications. I have a BS in clinical nutrition, I'm an award-winning author, I host a radio show on several different stations here in Atlanta. I do B98, you've heard of them? I do their Sunday morning show. 750 WSB, I do their Sunday morning show, 95.5 to beat, WNIV, WGKA. So we do a lot of stuff around town. Anybody ever hear the radio show? No, one, one, yeah, no, one, two, that's it. Well, this is what I look like, sorry. <laughs> and what we're going to talk about tonight is brain food. Kind of important. And the neat part about the things we're going to talk about tonight, it's not, so, it's not only what you eat, it's what you don't eat. That makes your brain work. So a lot of things we're going to teach you tonight are passive, not active. That's good, right? You don't have to do anything. Okay? <laughs> and we like that. Let's talk about first how the body works, okay? Your brain sits up here, right? In most cases? Yeah. <laughs> and the, that was a joke. You can laugh. <laughs> brain sends messages down the spine, out the nerves, to every cell in your body. Nothing happens unless your brain tells it what to do. Can we agree with that? Yeah. Okay. So we don't want interference from the brain to the body. There's two, essentially two things that can cause interference with messages from the brain to the body. One is chemical. Okay, what would be a good example of that? Brain, doesn't, brain can't tell the body how to work. How about alcohol? Drink too much, fall down, right? The brain, the messages can't get along the nerves to the muscles so you can't control them. The other thing is physical. So the ultimate physical interruption would be if I cut the nerve to your arm. You'd be paralyzed, right? Doesn't matter how many organic foods we take, <laughs> that arm is going to be paralyzed. But there can be some interruption with the nerve. We can pinch a nerve. And if we pinch a nerve, the messages in the brain can't get to the body. Depending how bad the pinch is, depends how bad the problem is. So if we pinch a nerve, what's one thing that can happen if we have a pinch nerve? Pain. Pain, exactly, right? So I'm going to give you some logic, ready? Okay, give me a finger. If I'm doing this and it hurts, how can we stop the pain? Stop doing that, right? So, sounds silly, but that's logic. So many times you may have a pinched nerve and you try to treat it chemically by covering up the pain impulses when the problem is physical. That statement alone is novice in healthcare. And you guys figured it out. I can't tell you how many patients. I've been in practice 26 years. I've seen, I don't even know, somewhere between 10 and 20,000 patients personally, not counting my partners. Personally. And patients come in. I had a guy today from the military. I've had back and leg pain since 19, 2003. He was in Afghanistan. He hurt his back. He's had MRIs, CAT scans, injections, drugs. Nothing's gotten rid of the pain. I said, what was the diagnosis? They said it was a pinched nerve. Unpinch it. And his eyes lit up and he says, well, that makes sense. <laughs> so we want to make sure the brain is able to tell the body how to work physically and we're going to talk chemically today a lot. Okay? So that's one of the things we're going to talk about. Now, the brain functions with chemicals called neurotransmitters. What's a famous neurotransmitter? Serotonin. You may have heard of that? Serotonin makes you happy, right? It's good stuff. Okay? Serotonin has to be made from raw materials. So you have to have the raw materials in order to manufacture serotonin and dopamine and norepinephrine and GABA and all these other neurotransmitters in the body. So many times folks will say, well, Doc, I'm on antidepressants, specific serotonin reuptake inhibitors. You may have heard of those. Yeah. And we take those because we're trying to utilize the little bit of serotonin that our brain has. Novel idea. What if we just make more serotonin? Well, there's an idea. And about 90 or 95% of the serotonin in your, is in your body does not go to your brain. 95% of the serotonin goes elsewhere in your body. Most people don't know that. So if you only have a little bit of serotonin, everything is fighting for the serotonin. Let's make more. So how do we make serotonin? Here's your, here's your recipe. Okay? You eat a protein. Could be the bean salad you just had. Okay, how was the food, by the way? Excellent. Good. I'm going to talk about the food and why we serve this and how it ties into brain food. And your job is going to be to remind me about cabbage and why it's good for romance. Okay, the chemical in cabbage that actually increases your testosterone level. 
which is your romance hormone, okay? So that's your job, in case I forget, okay? Sit up front, that's what happens. <laughs> so you eat the bean salad. The bean salad goes in your stomach. Anybody have kids? Okay, almost every hand, right? There you go. Okay. I have a six-year-old, almost seven. She has essentially a perfect digestive system. The reason is she has a lot of digestive enzymes. So she can eat a bean salad and the stomach acid is going to break the proteins into something called amino acids. Anybody hear the word? Okay, and amino acids in the stomach then go into the small intestine where they get absorbed. So in order to produce tryptophan, in order to produce serotonin, we have to have an amino acid called tryptophan. With me so far? If I lose you, just raise your hand, okay? You have to have tryptophan. Tryptophan breaks down in your stomach and goes into your small intestine where good bacteria, you might know it as probiotics, produce B vitamins. You want to know where B vitamins come from? If you go into the supplement section, you buy a B vitamin supplement. Where does it come from? Bacteria produce it. In your colon, you have bacteria capable of producing B vitamins. Vitamin B6 combines with tryptophan to create a chemical called 5-HTP. 5-HTP is the precursor to serotonin. Ah. And serotonin will become melatonin. Melatonin helps you do what? Sleep. Sleep. This is why people are depressed, anxious, bipolar, can't sleep. They don't have enough serotonin to become melatonin. So you can take melatonin, but why don't we fix the cause of the problem, which is your digestive system not breaking down proteins into amino acids. Make sense? Everybody's head just did this. It's so cool. (laughs) Make sense? So what we can do is make sure our stomach has enough stomach acid like my daughter's, like your kids. Because kids are amazing. They can survive on, like, French fries and Cheerios. (laughs) And they grow. Because their digestive system is so fine-tuned, they can extract out the little bit of nutrition that's found in foods like that. As we get older, we don't have that ability anymore. Unless we increase our stomach acid. So here's your first, uh, first little tip I'm going to give you. How to increase your stomach acid and help you digest your food better. And you probably have this in your counter right now. Raw organic apple cider vinegar. Your grandmother told you about that, didn't she? <laughs> Raw organic apple cider vinegar is just amazing. If there were two drugs I can take, to me, take with me on a desert island, it would be apple cider vinegar and garlic. Okay? But raw organic apple cider vinegar alkalizes your system. The problem is most of the foods you eat are very acidic. And the brain doesn't like acid. The brain likes slightly alkaline. And so you're eating things like alcohols, meats, sugars, dairies, coffee, sodas, artificial sweeteners. Your body becomes acidic. The brain doesn't like that. Apple cider vinegar, even though it's an acid, when it gets into your stomach and is digested, the ash, the thing that's left over, like you burn wood, it's an ash, the ash of apple cider vinegar is alkaline. And it seems to stimulate your digestive enzymes. So if you're going to have a bean salad and not be able to go out afterwards, (laughs) for social reasons, (laughs) raw organic apple cider vinegar is amazing. Try it and see how much. That's a good point. I like two tablespoons. Now, two tablespoons might be too much for some people. So take a teaspoon. Take a half a teaspoon. You can mix it with water. I like if you mix it with lemon juice or tomato juice, another acid, it goes down a lot smoother. Or, do like I do because I don't like the flavor of it, use it as a salad dressing. Okay? I use one, one part water, one part apple cider vinegar, and one part oil. And we'll talk about oils in a second. There are omega-3 fatty acid oils like hemp oil. Okay? Hemp oil is great. Hemp oil has a very strong flavor though. So you might add just a little bit of hemp oil. Macadamia nut oil, very high in omega-3 fatty acids. Didn't know that, did you? Macadamia nuts are high in omega-3s, which are good for your brain, but very expensive. Okay? So you might want to try a little bit of hemp oil at first. We have hemp oil in a lot of the salads up here in your recipes, but we only add a little bit so it's not over, overwhelming. And we'll cover omega-3s in a second. So one part water, one part apple cider vinegar, one part oil, and then you can season it however you want. You can add ginger to it if you want a more Asian flair. You can add garlic to it and oregano to give it an Italian flair. And you'll be amazed. The apple cider vinegar is amazing. If you have acid reflux, unbelievable. 
Okay? So, back to digestion, breaking down proteins into amino acids to produce neurotransmitters. What happens is, the stomach, as we get older, stops producing so much acid. And, many times, the stomach, which sits here below your diaphragm, will push up against your diaphragm. And when it pushes up against your diaphragm, you can't digest your food. So follow me on this. You swallow food, it goes down your esophagus. There's a little hole in your diaphragm called the esophageal sphincter. It opens up, food drops into your stomach, the esophageal sphincter closes, you digest your food, and the stomach churns food like this. Mixes it like a bag, like you have a mush in a bag, you're kind of mixing it together. That's how it blends it with the acids. Then it passes into your small intestine. If your stomach is slammed up against your diaphragm, the food can reflux up through this hole and create acid reflux. Now many times someone may suggest, well I'm going to give you a proton pump inhibitor. You've heard of those, right? When you have acid reflux, the commercials on TV, every third commercial is for one of these. Well, a proton pump inhibitor prevents you from producing protons, acid. What do we need acid for? Digest our food. So if we shut down the acid production, now we can't digest our food properly. You may not get the reflux, but you can't break down your food. And if you take proton pump inhibitors, they forget to mention to you that it prevents you from absorbing something called vitamin B12 and calcium. Oh, well that's not good, is it? So apple cider vinegar is something you might want to try, but many times the stomach slams up against the diaphragm, and I massage the stomach essentially down away from the diaphragm, and almost instantly there's relief. I work on about 10 to 15 stomachs a day on a busy day in my office. My office is right in Marietta, right on 41. Somebody's asking me where you're from. I'm here. Usually I have to travel all around the country to give lectures. It's like I'm four minutes from, I live right up there on Roswell Road. It's like, yay! <laughs> so, but I work on stomachs every single day, including infants. My brain explodes when somebody comes in and says, my infant is, is, is regurgitating, and the doctor put her on a pill to shut down her stomach production. And I want to... Grrr. No, don't shut down the kid's stomach acid production. Pull the stomach away from the diaphragm. And it works wonders. All right, Lori? All right, Madeline? Okay. <laughs> it's a miracle. It really is. I mean, it's incredible how well it works. Okay? So sometimes the problem is physical, not chemical, and the stomach is an example of when it's physical. Okay? Susan, you watch everybody's head nod from back there? Isn't it great? <laughs> so many times the problem is physical, not chemical, and it's not, a, it's not that you're low in proton pump inhibitors. Okay? <laughs> That's not the problem. But apple cider vinegar really is amazing, especially if you have a big meal. You guys need more paper? If you run out of paper, let me know, okay? We've only been doing this 10 minutes. We've still got another about 40 minutes to go, okay? So. so fixing the stomach and getting it back to the way it was when you were a kid is my goal. And it works wonders. The other thing we have to look at, the nerve supply in the mid-back. That's the nerve supply that goes from the brain to the stomach. So sometimes you have pain in the mid-back and you have stomach problems, same thing. You're pinching a nerve that goes to the stomach. The brain can't tell the stomach how to work. Make sense? So many times patients come in and they'll say, Doc, i got low back pain. And as I'm interviewing them, they have gas bloating, diarrhea, constipation, and uh, they, they have trouble in, in the bedroom. And this is the nerve that controls the colon, sex organs, and bladder. And their eyes light up and they go, oh, that makes sense. I hurt my back two years ago and ever since then, gas bloating, diarrhea, constipation. Oh. Painful periods, irregular periods, loss of sex drive, urinary issues. It's all the same nerve. So oftentimes your health problems are not individual. They all go back to the same thing. The brain not being able to talk to the organs because of a pinch nerve. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. So we want to get the digestive system working. There are seven foods that if you put in your body will have an adverse effect on your digestive system because they're so hard to digest. Okay? They on my list? Yes. They're under foods to avoid. I'm jumping around on my notes. Sorry about that. Those seven foods that are hard to digest are alcohol, meats, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. And collectively, you all had one thought. My God, that's everything. <laughs> There's good news. Okay? I'm gonna, let me cover that, okay? <laughs> Anybody ever heard that wine is good for your heart? Yeah. Have you heard that? What kind of wine? Red, Red wine. Why isn't white wine good for your heart? 
I don't know. I don't know that answer either. Okay, it's a rhetorical question. <laughs> the reason is that the red grapes have chemicals in them. Something like resveratrol. You heard of resveratrol? Got to come to my anti-aging lecture. I'll teach you the way to actually reverse the damage to your genes. And resveratrol is one of them. However, only organic grapes have resveratrol. If you're out drinking non-organic wine, you're getting essentially zero resveratrol. Oops. So where do we get organic wine? Susan, any suggestions where we can get some organic wine maybe? Well, you can help them out here. <laughs> so if you're going to do red wine, please, I beg of you, do organic. Plus you're not getting the pesticides, herbicides, and tranquilizers that they spray on the grapes. Follow? Okay. So if we're going to do alcohol, I'm going to suggest small amounts, organic. Okay? Sugar. Sugar used to be bad, right? Remember those days? I saw a commercial for Snapple the other day. And it said, Snapple, made with real sugar. <laughs> Suddenly sugar is a health food. Sugar's bad. But in the 1970s, we, the scientists, the geniuses of the world, came up with something called high fructose corn syrup. You've heard of it? Yeah. Okay. Now, ladies, it's all ladies here. We worry about weight, don't we? Okay, we don't want to gain weight. 120 calories, you come on in, even though you're a guy. That's all right, it's good, it's me and all the girls then, go. No. <laughs> you can stay, really. <laughs> 120 calories of sugar. One calorie will get stored as fat. 120 calories of high fructose corn syrup, same amount of calories. 42 calories will be stored as fat. It's 42 times more fattening than sugar. Where do we find high fructose corn syrup? Everywhere. Everywhere. Is that the same effect in children also? Absolutely. Yes. Has anybody ever noticed that kids are getting bigger? Okay. Many experts, myself included, believe that high fructose corn syrup is one of the main reasons. And it's everywhere. And you believe that. As teachers, you all agree with me, right? Yeah. My daughter goes to school up in Kennesaw, and I just saw that they're raising money. Drink Coke and raise money for school. So, it's interesting. About 15 years ago, I was talking about a product called Stevia. You may have heard of it, right? Stevia. Okay, Stevia, Stevia, tomato, tomato. <laughs> And companies, the artificial sweetener companies, didn't like people like me. Because Stevia was never proven safe. Now you're seeing commercials for products called what? Truvia. Purevia. Who do you think are the parent companies? Coke and Pepsi. You will see Coke and Pepsi diet so to have Truvia and Purevia in the very near future. It's already in different countries now. Okay? It's coming here too. Um, back to cane sugar. Pepsi. Yeah. Back to cane sugar, because everyone's realizing that high fructose corn syrup, that commercial they say it's the same, that's a lie. Okay? I have the research, it's a lie. And I watch that commercial, I think, how can they put that on TV? It's a blatant lie. High fructose corn syrup, because sucrose is part fructose and part glucose. Here comes chemistry again. Glucose is necessary for brain function. Your brain needs glucose. It's the fuel your brain runs on. Fructose, the brain can't use. So 100% of the fructose goes into your liver. doesn't get utilized by the brain or any other cell. In the liver, it gets converted into something called uric acid. What's uric acid famous for? What disease? Gout. gets into the joints and it hurts. All the joints, not just the big toe. Uric acid prevents your body from producing something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels and increases blood flow everywhere. So I see people, I'm 50, and I see guys my age taking little blue pills and talking about, oh, I have no interest in the bedroom anymore. God, I'm so, I'm, why? High fructose, one of the reasons, high fructose corn syrup converts to uric acid. Uric acid prevents nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a vasodilator. Opens up your blood vessels. Can't perform. Wow. The other issue is a pinched nerve in the low back because that's a nerve supply into the reproductive organs. And a bad diet clogs up your blood vessels. And blood vessels get clogged up, can't carry blood. Make sense? Okay, any questions so far? Yes? Um, I drink a 
a ton of diet pills. And, and coffee. Santa Maria. <laughs> exactly. Um, what, I mean, Matt, I have those always telling me like, how terrible it is. But what are your thoughts on I mean, I know it's easier to avoid caffeine, but is it better than regular? Or? Caffeine is the least of your problems, okay? Although it's bad. All right, let's talk about aspartame and how it affects the brain, okay? A little blue packet, okay? Aspartame, when it gets into the body, breaks down to three components. Aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Is this getting too chemistry for you? Yeah. Is it too much? A little too much? Okay. All right, I'll cut back. Okay. Aspartic acid is a chemical in, in the blue packet that's called an excitotoxin. It causes your brain to get so excited that it literally causes the cells to burst open and die. It's called apoptosis, a cell killing itself. Okay? So what happens is when you get aspartic acid in your brain, you need some of it to keep your brain functioning. Too much of it, the brain cells literally excite themselves to death. Wow. Okay? So that's bad. Because the brain controls everything in today's lectures on brain function. So of all the things I'll ever teach you, and I hope you come back, we hope we're going to do this again next month, a different lecture, come back, bring your friends. Of all the things I could ever teach you in nutrition, the worst thing you can put in your body, by far, bar none, artificial sweetener. Yay! So what about the diet coke? That's bad. Splenda, good question. What about Splenda? Splenda or sucralose is a chlorinated hydrocarbon. When you chlorinate a hydrocarbon, it, causes your, it, it basically causes your estrogen receptor sites to get real excited. So what, bottom line is it produces more estrogen in your body. Now, we don't need any more estrogen. Estrogen is a growth hormone. If you're not growing this way, which way do we grow? And it can cause abnormal cell growth. What do we call abnormal cell growth? Bad for a different reason. Follow? Okay. So artificial sweetener are absolutely positively bad. Now, if you're drinking cola, cola has something they call phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is an acid. When you put acid in your body, your body has to neutralize the acid. The body uses calcium as its primary neutralizing agent. Which means you're sucking calcium out of your blood, out of your muscles, and out of your bones to neutralize the acid, specifically phosphoric acid, and in coffee, caffeine. Sucking calcium out to neutralize the acid. Is that good? Caffeine. Caffeine is an acid too, yeah. Most of the stimulus, caffeine, bromine, theobromine, isotheobromine, all of these suck calcium out of your bones and to neutralize the acid. Right, doctors? Doctor in the back of the room is nodding your head with me, yes. So <laughs> You don't like me anymore, do you? <laughs> First ten minutes, hey, he's not so bad now. So, now, if you're going to do coffee, I'll negotiate with you. How about that? Please. If we're going to do coffee, I beg of you, please, organic coffee. Okay. Nothing has more synthetic pesticides. No food in the world has more synthetic pesticides than commercially grown coffee. In fact, one study I read said if you drink one cup of commercial coffee, you'll get more synthetic pesticides than if you ate non-organic fruits and vegetables for an entire year. That's how much pesticide is in coffee. So if you're going to do coffee, please, can you switch to organic for me? You'll do that for me? Okay. And where can we get organic coffee? And can we sweeten it with? Stevia. Are you okay with the trivia or something? Well, those are extracts of stevia. Now, sun crystal is not bad. It's stevia and sugar mixed together. So that's a good transition point, right. yes. It's an extract of stevia. They take out what's called the stevia sides. And they add, in that process, erythritol is added to the, to the, to the process. Erythritol, too much, will give you diarrhea. But you've got to drink a lot of it. Okay? So I am way better with the Truvia and Purvia than I am with artificial sweetener. I'd still rather use the pure stevia. Okay? My favorite brand of stevia is called New Stevia. We have any samples? Okay, we may even have some samples here. Okay, okay thank you. N-E-W or N-U. N-U. Okay, we may even have some free samples here for you, right? Okay. And that's my favorite brand. It's sold here at Whole Foods. Um, but that's my, they're all good, but I like New Stevia as my favorite. Why? It, it's the sweetest. I just like the flavor. Okay. But yeah, I try, companies send me samples all the time. They're like, please, talk about my, talk about my product. Talk about my product. 
<laughs> and New Stevie is my favorite. Okay, yes? Okay. Do not have finished nerve. Do not drink coffee. Do not drink wine. Do not <laughs> take some of these things that you're saying to avoid. So what is my problem? I can't you can't what? Yes. I know. So what's my problem? I can't remember. Is it because... Oh, we're getting there. No. We're getting there. Okay. Why can't I remember anything? Yes, children will suck the life out of your brain. Okay, we all know that. There's no question. Okay? So it may not be... Again, there's two things we have to cover. What you can't do and what you can do. Okay? And Dr. Mariana is going to hand out some new stevia samples. There you go. How's that for cool? Yes? Great question. What should I drink? Okay? Uh, teas are great. Okay, if you like tea, you can, and you don't have, it doesn't have to be black tea. It can be chamomile tea. It can be licorice tea. Um, it could be, uh, gosh, raspberry tea. Okay? A lot of them don't have caffeine. Okay, so I would go for, what's the difference between caffeine-free and decaffeinated? Or naturally caffeine-free and decaffeinated? So caffeine. So that's caffeine, right? You want to say naturally caffeine-free. That means it never had caffeine to begin with. Okay, and if, if it's not organic, many times the way they decaffeinate tea and coffee is they use turpentine and formaldehyde. Okay, so I'd rather go with an organic decaffeinated coffee or tea. And you don't have to drink uh, iced tea. You don't drink hot tea, you can have iced tea. What I do is I take lemon juice, organic lemon juice, I think it's on aisle 10 over here. <laughs> organic lemon juice and stevia and water, mix it together, got lemonade. And it's awesome. Can you say that again? Hi, I'm Dr. Joe. How far back? Oh, no. <laughs> Lemon juice, water, and stevia. Okay? And that is unbelievable. I have a six-year-old. She'll say, Dad, let's make lemonade. She makes it herself now. She loves it. It's lemonade. It's made with stevia. Stevia has over 70 vitamins and minerals in it, which are necessary for brain function. So stevia is actually good for you as opposed to something that's not good for you. And it's safe for diabetics, by the way. It does not, it's, it does not spike the blood sugar at all. Zero. Yes? So how do you feel about Love them. If it's a cold, it'll have phosphoric acid. The other ones are great. Yeah, I have no problem. My daughter or myself drinking these. They're perfectly fine. The what? Uh, Steez is one of the companies that makes one. Uh, what's another brand? Zevia. Zevia is another brand. We should have coupons back there for Zevia too. If you guys want to go buy some Zevia stuff too. Okay. The what? Oh, it's even in a cold cooler, yeah. It, it tastes fine. I mean, you know, it, it doesn't taste exactly like the original, but it's, it gives you the idea and it works great. Okay? So these are fun little things you can do as well as with your kids. And lemon juice is very alkalizing to the system. Brain works better when it's alkaline. Okay, with me so far? It's amazing. Everybody's got like a page of notes already. So. <laughs> All right. Where's my note? I want to make sure I cover my notes at least. Okay, uh, we talked about digestion. Let's talk about foods we can eat, okay? Well, let's, let's cover alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweet. That's where you were. If you're going to do meat, again, I beg of you, please do organic meat. Some things I'll negotiate with you on. Uh, if you're going to eat a fruit or a vegetable, you're not eating the skin, it's not that important to have organic. Is it important? Yes, but it's not that important. Watermelon, wash it with soap and water before you cut it open so you don't cross-contaminate. Great. doesn't necessarily have to be organic. Okay, bananas doesn't have. It's better to be organic, but again, I understand times are tough financially. But some things I can't negotiate with you on. Okay, coffee I can't negotiate with you unless you do organic. Okay, meat same thing. You don't want to do the meats that have steroids, chemicals, hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides, and tranquilizers. And the best place in the world to get those kind of meats is right here. Nobody else does it better than Whole Foods. Okay. So, if you're going to do meat, please. And if you're going to do meat, it's not a good idea to grill it. Because those grill marks that you get on meat, those chemicals that are created when fats and proteins are heated really hot are called heterocyclic amines. Heterocyclic amines are carcinogenic. Now, you have one hamburger, it's not going to cause cancer. However, it's cumulative. And if you put it over charcoal and the, the fat drips down on the coal and the fat creates smoke and it surrounds the meat, those are called uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Bad body language. I'm getting some bad body language out of you. <laughs> what? Yeah, well, the well done meat, not so much, okay? Yes. Okay, but the grill marks, I know they taste good, folks. I understand that, but I just I got to give it to you. What? Now, 
Let me, let me put in my, my, I should have put in my disclaimer right away. Nobody's going to do everything I teach you tonight. Nobody. However, you may pick up one thing and you're going to listen to one thing and you're going to get something else. That's what I want to do tonight. Okay? And the nice part is, is once you start eating healthy, you feel so much better and you think, why did I do it the other way? This is so much quicker, easier, and cheaper than anything I've ever done. I've lost weight. My love life's improved. I go to the bathroom better. I'm sleeping great. My brain's functioning better. Why would I want to go back? And then you will. <laughs> and you'll feel awful and you'll stay awful for a couple of months and you'll go wait a minute what was different oh that's right I did what Joe said and then you go back and everyone does it and eventually you get it and when you finally get it you'll save a ton of money you'll feel great you'll look wonderful and it'll be, you'll, you'll wonder why you ever did that to yourself before everyone does it I did it okay when I was young I was very fat I have stretch marks all over my body I know what it's like to be fat okay I can't eat a cookie I can eat a box of cookies, okay? But I can't eat a cookie. <laughs> and if you understand what that means, the reason is sugar is more addicting than cocaine. And we know this through many, many scientific studies we've done. Sugar is more addicting than cocaine. And so that's why if you're a sugar addict, you really got to stop. Cut out the carbs, then the brain settles down again, and then you can go back to eating some sugars. Okay, so it could be the sugars that's causing your brain to malfunction because it stimulates the pleasure centers in your brain. Okay, so meats, please, please do organic. Dairy products, same thing. Okay, a lot of the commercial dairy, should I get gross? It's okay, gross is okay? 100% yes? Okay. All right, a lot, of cr- a lot of dairy that you're eating, the cows are injected with something called recombinant bovine growth hormone. Recombinant bovine growth hormone causes the cow to produce more milk than it normally would. Okay, 50, 60, 80% more. Now, ladies, if you ever breastfed, you know that that hurts. Imagine your breast being 50, 60, 80% bigger, filled with milk. Everybody's face went... (laughs) That's what they're doing to these cows. And the udders get so engorged with milk that they tear. I mean, imagine your breast being so filled that they tear. And when they tear, they become infected. And when they're infected, we have to give the cows what? Antibiotics. That gets into the milk. But that's not the gross part. If you have an infection with pus and blood, it drips down into the milk. And so it's mixed in with the milk. They said it was okay. It's uh, it's part of the milk and the guidelines. This is no kidding. Funniest book I ever read. FDA guidelines. The guidelines... (laughs) I laughed the whole time. Guidelines for milk. No more than 750,000 pus cells in eight drops of milk. Wow. Yes? What if that regular milk that says no RBST? Okay, if it says no recombinant bovine growth hormone, that's a little better. However, we don't know what the cow was fed. The cow could have been fed genetically. You cross something out? No, I'm not. Oh, what? <laughs> recombinant bovine growth hormone, bad. If it says no recombinant bovine growth hormone, that's better. But many times, if it's not organic, the cows are fed genetically modified corn and soybeans. Cows are not designed to make eat genetically modified corn and soybeans. Whole nother lecture on genetically modified corn and soybeans. Go to my website. It's on my radio show. I have my radio show's archive. You can listen to the show. I've been doing my radio show I don't know how many years now and after the show I'm always energized and I'm happy and after I did the show on, on, on genetically modified foods my producer Nisla shut off the microphone she looked at me and I looked at her and we stared at each other for about 30 seconds and she said wow and I said wow I'd never done a show that where I was moved to tears personally my show than when I did the one on, on genetically modified foods. If you don't know about it, you need to know about it. It's affecting you and it's affecting your children. So I'll, I'm going to tell you this at the end, but I'll tell you now. On my business card, everybody have my card? This card, right? You have this card too? You don't have that card. Okay. On the card is my website. On the website, on the right-hand side, there's a link that says newsletter. Click on that, follow the directions, it'll give you access to about 500 hours of radio shows absolutely free. It really is free. It's no bait and switch. I don't give out your email address. It's free. Find the one I did on genetically modified foods. 
take time and listen to it. Download it, put it on MP3, put it on a disc, put it in your car. That's the show I want you to listen to. And that's why I was so excited when Whole Foods asked me to come and speak here. Because we need to get the word out of genetically modified foods. It has changed the world and you don't even know it. Yes? Didn't I just recently read an article that the Whole Foods was accepting genetically modified foods into their product lines and saying that it was all okay? Well, I don't agree with that. Okay, That's why you want to look for organic foods or foods that are not GMO. Number one GMO food. Soybeans. 95% of soybeans in this country are genetically modified. 40% of corn is genetically modified. Okay? So, yeah, it's going to be on the market. That doesn't mean you have to buy it, though. Okay? Organic solves the problem. Yes. Absolutely, positively, organic solves the problem. Okay? So, there you go. Yes? What was the problem on milk? And could you discuss eggs? If you're going to do milk, I recommend organic milk. Bottom line, or any organic dairy product, okay? Soy milk. Soy milk is okay, but sometimes hard to digest, okay? I personally am a huge fan of coconut milk. Coconut milk is loaded with medium chain fatty acids, which helps stimulate your metabolism, helps keep you young and pretty, okay? And they're using it now. The what? You don't have a problem with the fat. Not at all. It's great fat, it's a good saturated fat. Okay, so coconut milk, absolutely positively the way I love it. I love coconut milk. More than almond milk? More, I, almond milk is very alkalizing to the system. I like coconut milk better because it tastes better. Okay? Coconut, well, almond milk's great. Coconut milk's better. Okay? Again, you don't have to listen to everything I say. You don't have to do everything I say. So you okay so far? All right, good. Okay. <laughs> Eggs. If you're going to do eggs, please do organic again. As, yeah, animal products, I don't want to negotiate with you. I want you to do organic. Okay? The reason is it depends what the chicken's fed, what the egg's made out of. <laughs> Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So far, so good? What's the hemp milk? Hemp, folks, not the same one you had in college. Okay? <laughs> Don't try to smoke this. So <laughs> Hemp is, a, hemp is a, a seed, a very high in omega-3 fatty acids. Now, your brain needs omega-3 fatty acids for normal brain function. And hemp is an excellent source. Chia seeds are a great source. Flax seeds are a great source. Macadamia nuts, walnuts are a great source. Now, well, it's a lot of chemistry. I'll skip that one. <laughs> this form of omega-3 needs to be converted into a different form. Fish oil is already in the form that your brain needs. Okay? I like that. It's called DHA and EPA. You need the oil that's in fish. Or this has to be converted into it. The problem is when you do fish oil, you run the risk of what kind of heavy metal? Mercury. Mercury, exactly right. So here's a little fact that's going to blow your mind. Fish don't produce omega-3 fatty acids. Fish don't make omega-3 fatty acids. Fish get it from eating smaller fish who eat smaller fish who eat algae and plankton. Who said it? You win. There you go. Who eat algae and plankton. Plankton and algae are the purest form of omega-3 fatty acids there is with no mercury, no lead, no polyvinyl chloride. Astrazanthin is something different. Astrazanthin is, is an algae... And what happens is it, it, it has its own, uh, when it starts to dry up, it produces this amazing amount of an antioxidant. If you've never heard of astaxanthin, you're going to. Okay? Astaxanthin is from an algae that has very high, way, way higher than anything we've ever discovered in the history of the world as far as antioxidants. Okay? But slightly different. Okay? So we want to do chlorella, spirulina. These are excellent sources of omega-3 fatty acids. Years ago, people came to me and said, Dr. Joe, what would you consider the ultimate supplement? I said, if somebody could take fruits and vegetables and put them in a pill, we'd have the ultimate supplement. So what I did is, I did it. I created something called Essential Source. Get your essential nutrients from the source, which is what? Fruits and vegetables. We, talked, we started the lecture by saying get to the cause, not the symptoms, right? 18 different types of fruit, 18 different types of vegetables. We juice it, take the water out at 80, uh, 78 degrees Fahrenheit, so no heat destroys the enzymes, and we compress it into a caplet, not a capsule. Many capsules are made with horse hooves and bone marrow, and they're high in glutamic acid. Glutamic acid is an excitotoxin just like aspartame. 
Where's the glutamic acid? Where have you heard that used before? Mono sodium glutamate. It's an excitotoxin. It destroys the brain cells just like artificial sweetener. I take two fruit in the morning and two veggie in the afternoon. This is one of the two supplements I take every single day. For my daughter, when I make her smoothies, I take four of these. I throw in a smoothie, grind it up, and she drinks it. She loves it. Has almost no flavor. So this is a great way to get kids to have about 10 servings of raw fruits and vegetables every day in two fruit and two veggies. So these things are awesome. Okay? Any age child. As long as they're eating solid food, absolutely. Yes. I would take, if it's a real infant, I'd do one and one. One fruit and one veggie. And then as they, you know, toddler age, two and two. My daughter's six, she does two and two. She's been doing that for years. Okay? And then I said, all right, what am I still missing? If I, I, I'm a vegan. I don't eat animal products, okay? But if, if, I, if I'm eating a good diet, what am I still missing? And I thought, well, omega-3 fatty acids, we all need more of those for normal brain function. And there's things out there that we just don't get in regular food. You may have heard of wheatgrass? Yeah. Ever taste it? Yeah. <laughs> But it's loaded with antioxidants and nutrients and phytochemicals and iron. Okay? And wheatgrass and barley grass and alfalfa grass and kamut grass. And so what I did is I sat down with my chemists and I created something called Dr. Joe Super Greens. This is the other supplement I take every day. I invented this for myself. I didn't invent this for you guys. But then my patients wanted it, my staff wanted it, so I put it in a in a container. This has several grasses to alkalize your system. The brain functions very well when it's alkaline, right? And grasses are great to alkalize your system. I put chlorella and spirulina in here. Now the nice part is that spirulina and chlorella can actually detox heavy metals from your body, like mercury and lead. Mercury, when it gets into the brain, causes brain damage. So if you're buying the cheap fish oil from the big box stores, it's probably loaded with mercury causing more brain damage than it's helping you with the omega-3s. Make sense? Yes? It's awful, yes. So if you're going to do fish oils, Nordic Naturals is a company I like. They certify that they're mercury-free, they do a cold process distillation, but Nordic Natural is a good one that's certified mercury-free. You want to make sure it says certified mercury-free on there, and it does somewhere. But that's a good brand. Okay, 365 brand. Best of my knowledge, is certified mercury-free. Okay? Mer- mer- molecularly distilled, that's what we're talking about. That's what you want to do. It has to be molecularly distilled to take the mercury out. But it wouldn't say that on the... Uh, the cheap one. No, on the ingredients, it wouldn't say mercury. No, no, it wouldn't say... No, 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 it wouldn't say... We can say mercury. So, <laughs> but that's why I do the... The super greens. It also has rice bran in it. Rice bran feeds the bacteria in your colon. It's like fertilizer for your bacteria. So you feed the bacteria so that it can produce more nutrients and B vitamins and absorb your nutrition better. So this has the grasses, it has rice bran, it has the omega-3 fatty acids in it, and it has dults. Dults is what? Seaweed. Seaweed has iodine. Iodine is good for what? Thyroid. Thyroid. None of us get enough uh, iodine in our diet, I promise. And So this is, between this and this, I figure I've created the, the core of good supplementation. Okay? Any questions? Yes? Does rice bran also eat the bad bacteria? No. That's the nice part. Okay? The good bacteria like it. You need some bad bacteria. You have to have that balance, and it doesn't feed the yeast either. Okay? Yes? This is a powder I take about two tablespoons a day. I mix it with water and stevia, and that's one of my drinks I have all day. You have to drink enough water. If you don't like water, mix this with stevia, and I love it. It doesn't taste like anything? It has a very mild flavor to it. It's not like those heavy, grassy ones that taste like lawn. You know? So. Maybe put it in a protein shake. Put it in a protein shake. Absolutely. Perfect. I mix it with uh, frozen bananas and uh, pineapple. My do- that's my daughter's smoothie. Okay, she'll have that for dinner sometimes. Yeah. Is it gluten-free? Yes, it's gluten-free. Even though it has wheatgrass in it, the wheat doesn't form gluten until it forms the bar... The, 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 you didn't even mention barley when you were naming things. Okay. So I didn't know it. Yeah, as long as the grasses haven't formed the, the seed yet, it doesn't have gluten. Yes? What if you're not gluten? You don't have to worry about gluten, but you're actually allergic to gluten. Just stay away from there? This is wheatgrass, so I, I've never had anyone have an allergic reaction to it, so I can't say that for sure. I can't do wheat. 
If I do eat, my sinuses blow up, my stomach blows up, and I feel like I'm going to die, I, I drink this every day. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I think everybody is. Okay? We can go on for hours. I've got so much stuff to cover. I know you guys got to go home sooner or later. Okay? So, we, I want to go over some things, and please ask me questions, folks, okay? Brain sends messages down the spine out the nerves. If there's a pinched nerve, you've got to get it fixed. If you have back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, that means you have a pinched nerve. If you don't have pain, the problem is that 90% of the nerves don't feel pain. This is another aha moment. You don't feel high blood pressure. You don't feel diabetes. You don't feel high cholesterol. You don't feel osteoporosis. So my concern is that 90% of the time, your body is, can malfunction. You don't know it. So it's a good idea to check to see if there are any pinched nerves in the spine. And if there are, you can fix it. If you want, I can show you how to do that tonight. Okay? Is that something you want to see? Okay. Objective. No pain involved. I'm not going to do any pain. Okay? So I'll do that. You have a homework assignment. Cabbage. Cabbage. Okay, so we gave you the beans for the protein that produced the amino acids for the neurotransmitters. We gave you quinoa salad with romaine lettuce. Why romaine lettuce? It's high in omega-3 fatty acids. Did you know that? How about that? Omega-3s are necessary for brain function. Quinoa is a great grain that's gluten-free. High in protein, low in carbs. So we don't have to worry about not eating carbs if we want a grain. Quinoa is the best grain for that. Quinoa. Okay? And that's what's in the quinoa salad. You have the recipe. And then we did a cabbage salad. Why cabbage? Cabbage is high in a chemical called DIM. Diendolmethane. Diendolmethane prevents testosterone from being converted into estrogen. Now we need testosterone. Testosterone builds muscle. But not only here, how about your heart? How about your lungs? How about your reproductive organs? Testosterone is also your sex drive hormone. And so the cabbage will prevent testosterone from being converted into estrogen to keep those youthful looks about you. Strong muscles, high romance, good brain function, because testosterone helps the brain function better. Except in young men. It's a joke. So you make some, no, good. <laughs> but DIM, diendol methane, you can buy it in a supplement form, but you can just have cabbage. Solve the problem. Pretty nifty, huh? Yes. Raw is better than cooked. As far as I know, the cooked is still okay. Okay? It's one of those heat stable supplements or nutrients. Yes? All this food and suggestions are great, but what happens when you go out? Like, how do you, how do you, like, what do you do? Excellent. What happens when you go out? Okay? Let's cover that because this is real life. I'm going to. Was that a yawn? I'll show you how to fix it. <laughs> Was that a yawn? No, I'll show you how to fix it, though. I'll show you how to fix it. I'll, I'll show you how to fix it, though, okay? That's your homework assignment. Okay, when you go out, it's real simple. I, I want you to think, would Joe eat this? And if I would eat it, then you can eat it, okay? <laughs> so where do you want to go? Pick a place. Anywhere. California Pizza Kitchen. Excellent. Okay, you can have the salads. If you don't have a gluten intolerance, you can have the veggie pizzas with no cheese. Okay, very simple. I uh, went out to Chili's the other day. Had a Caribbean salad, had a pineapple and cherries. I thought there's no cherries in the Caribbean. <laughs> Where the guy came from, but I had a, a guacamole and a Caribbean salad. Okay, very simple. So you may have to think and look at the other places on the menu. Instead of looking at the main courses, look at the side orders, look at the salads, look at the appetizers, and create a meal out of that. And that's what I do, and I've been doing it for 26 years now. Never missed a meal. Best place to go if you're eating healthy, a cruise ship. A cruise ship. There is so much food there. It's insane. And if you tell them that you're gluten-free or vegan or vegetarian, they create meals just for you. It's awesome. And you always get served first, which I like. So, <laughs> airlines, always order the vegetarian meal, even if you're not a vegetarian. Why? It's a lot healthier. I'm not asking you to become vegetarian, but think healthy. Okay? Taco Bell, seven-layer bean burrito, no cheese, no sour cream. Not ideal, better. Okay, baked potatoes, salads, beans, bean, bean enchiladas instead of beef enchiladas, uh, taco salad with beans instead of beef, leave out the chips. If you go to Mexican, you're allowed six chips. I don't care how you do it, six chips. <laughs> dressing, try to stay away from the creamy dressings, like blue cheese. No, the oil's fine. I'm not, well, it's not fine, but like blue cheese. What's the blue part of blue cheese? 
It's mold! <laughs> and you pay extra for it! <laughs> what should we do with this France? What should we do with this cheese? It's moldy, huh? We're salty Americans. So <laughs> Charge them more. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid Americans. <laughs> but think, try to eat plant-based. That's one of the things I'm trying to get at here. I'm not asking you to be vegetarian, but try to think more plant-based. If it's an animal product, cheeses, beefs, try to make sure it's a organic or at least grass-fed. Okay? A good thing to give up if you have a gluten... T- if, here's a good rule, actually. You want your brain to function better? This might be your answer. Give up gluten for 10 days. <laughs> No breads, no cookies, no cakes, no pastas, unless they're gluten-free. On the 11th day, I want you to have a big slice of pizza. The reason is pizza dough is high in gluten. And the cheese has casein, which interacts similarly as gluten does in your small intestine. It causes inflammation. And when the colon inflames... What? Anything gluten. Okay, that's wheat, barley, and rye. Beer. Okay? And on the 10th... Ooh, sorry, I said the B word, didn't I? No. <laughs> And on the 11th day, have a slice of pizza and watch what happens. And if you get bloated gas, brain fog, you have a problem. It's amazing. When I have kids come in with autism, okay? It used to be 1 in 5,000. Now what's the statistic on kids? 1 in 133. New Jersey, 1 in every 60. I'm from New Jersey. 1 in 133, I think that's being conservative, and now diagnosed as autistic or Asperger's. And the quickest, simplest things I teach my parents is get them off the gluten right away. And I would probably say 80% of them see a dramatic improvement in three days. And try it on your kids. They may not be Asperger's or, or autistic, but get them off the gluten and watch how they calm down and focus. It's amazing. blows my mind. Okay, yes? What about fish that like the tilapia that's sold at Club Lakes or somewhere that is not what they say is... Corn-fed. Corn-fed, right. Okay. Tilapia is a scavenger. It's very similar to catfish. It's actually one of the worst fish you could eat. Which one? Tilapia. But everybody thinks it's such a great fish. They never attended my lectures. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tilapia, not a good fish. Farm-raised. It depends how they're farm-raised. Okay, most commercial farm-raised fish are fed steroids, chemicals, hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides, tranquilizers, and carrion, which is what? Carcass, dead animals. They grind up the dead animals, the fecal matter, they throw it into the fish. Okay, that's what they feed them. So if you're going to do farm-raised fish, Whole Foods has the farm-raised fish that are certified not to have all that junk in them. Okay? Tilapia bad, though. Okay. Which fish should we eat? <laughs> Salmon would be good as long as it's wild or certified farm-raised natural, okay? If you go to a store and the fish is really pink, that's a dye. Okay, because farm-raised fish, if they don't eat any omega-3s and, and algae uh, and plankton, their, their flesh is gray. They inject it with a pink dye to make it real bright. So the store you just mentioned, the real bright ones, they're all dyed. Okay. They're dead and they're dyed. Tuna, again, the bigger the fish, the more likely you're going to have mercury in it because it's been around longer and it's been eating other fish and it stores the mercury in the fat. So smaller fish, better. Okay? Well, tilapia is a scavenger from, from the get-go. Okay? But tilapia is small, but they feed it junk. Okay? All right. Well, let me show you how to get energy instantly because I know your, your fannies are getting sore and I can talk for hours. Instant energy. Yes, Lori? One comment. Yes. Oh yeah, it's cannellini beans. I grew up Italian and poor, so we ate a lot of poor Italian food. Cabbage, cannellini beans, olive oil, garlic. You saute up the garlic and the olive oil. You do that for everything in Italian. Start that out, add some uh, white cabbage, shred it up, and some cannellini beans, and it's amazing how delicious it is. It's inspect- And you could feed a family of four for like three bucks. Okay, it really is that cheap. Okay, so let me show you how to get energy, okay? Because I know you're getting tired, and then we're going to wrap it up. Unless you want me to keep going. <laughs> Who wants to be my volunteer? Come on, we got a bond now, you know? You starting to like me again? Or? Yeah. Okay, good, all right. Okay, good. Okay, now, stand here. All right, put your arm out. Push up toward the sky. 
Okay, nice and strong, right? Push up nice and strong. Okay. The problem is with our bodies, if we wanted, I'm going to teach you some exercises you can do to get your brain working. The problem is that most of us do unilateral things all day. We work the mouse, we brush our teeth, we talk on a phone. Everything's one-handed. And the brain is designed to be integrated, not segregated. What that means is the left and right hemisphere is supposed to be talking to each other. And all day, every day, we only use one hemisphere. So if you're right-handed, you use your left hemisphere. And so your brain short circuits. And so I'm going to show you how to reboot your brain. How about that? Okay. Is that cool? And this is a great exercise to do with kids because it reboots their brain and calms them down. All right? So we're going to simulate you using one side of your brain and not the other. <laughs> okay? We're going to have you march in place. Right arm, right leg. Left arm, left leg. Good. This is not normal. We're using the right side of her brain and that... Keep on doing it. <laughs> Right side, then the left side, then the right side, then the left side, then the right side, then the left side. Not good, but this is what we do all day, so I'm concentrating a day in her life. Okay? So watch what happens to the brain when we segregate the hemispheres. Okay, put your arm straight out. Oh, same way like you did. Just one. Go fly. All right, push up again. Isn't that wild? Push again. Yep. Isn't that creepy? Okay? I short, I'm going to fix you, don't worry. <laughs> we short-circuited her brain. So what I want to do is I want to reboot her brain. So if you can stand up, you can if you want to do this. I'm going to have you march in place, right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. Now we're using both hemispheres. Both cerebrum, both cerebellum. Okay? And we're using all parts of the brain and spinal cord. So even if you disagree or, or, or argue with everything I say and refuse to do any of it, this you can do. Okay? <laughs> I work with the U.S. Olympic team, the Cuban Olympic team. I've worked with eight Wimbledon champions in training, and I teach every one of them this. You can stop, put your arm out, push up toward the sky. <clears throat> Freaky, huh? One more time, ready? Push. <clears throat> Stronger than it was when we started. Yep. Thank you, dear. Yep, you're welcome. Pretty cool. Yay. So again, if you're going to march, right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. Right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. It is amazing. You start getting tired. You're going into an event. Okay? You have to deal with an argument. Great way to get the brain going. Yes? I'm a preschool teacher, and we do that on purpose with kids. We call it crossing the midline. Yes. And they have to reach. Perfect. Perfect. We do it. Uh, th yeah, this has been around forever. It's just not being taught. I know Dr. Montessori taught this stuff 100 years ago. Right. Okay? Pretty cool, huh? Okay? The other thing about the brain, I've got to cover this too. There's uh, blood vessels in the back of your brain called the basovatibular artery. Okay? It supplies blood to your brain like the carotid arteries do. If the bones in the neck twist out of place, they can pinch the blood supply going up to the brain. And you've pinched the blood supply up to the brain, you can't get oxygen. And many times that's the reason why the brain isn't working. It's again physical, not chemical. So if you've been in a car accident, a sports injury, you have headaches, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, these are indications that something's out of place, kinking or pinching the nerves and blood vessels. Unkink them, open up the nerve and blood supply, take the bad foods out of your diet. How was the food tonight? Good? Could you eat like this? This is easy, right? And it's so quick, it's so easy, it's really cheap too. So I want you to consider maybe making better choices one meal a month, one meal a week, one meal a day. And then make better choices every meal. And then when you don't make that good choice, notice how you feel. And you'll be amazed how rotten you feel almost instantly.